why a book about cybersecurity and cyber war, and, and, and why now? There's two quotes that I think best encapsulate the reason for this. The first is from President Obama, who declared that cybersecurity risks pose, quote, the most serious economic and national security challenges of the 21st century. Again, I'm not going to speak to that picture as much as I would like to speak to it. And again, you will decide whether that is the best or the worst category. Um, so that's the first quote, most serious economic and national security challenges of the 21st century. The second quote is from the former CIA director who said, quote, rarely has something been so important and so talked about with less and less clarity and less apparent understanding. Now you can see this gap between important and understanding, again, in lots of different ways. One would be by the numbers. 70% of business executives have made a cybersecurity decision for their company. Not 70% of CTOs or CIOs, but executives in general, despite the fact that no major MBA program teaches it as part of your normal management responsibility. That's the same thing at the schools we teach our journalists, our lawyers, you name it. Or you can come at it through the series of funny but frankly kind of sad anecdotes that we came across in the research for the book. One, for example, is from the former Secretary of Homeland Security, the agency ostensibly in charge of cybersecurity in the US on the civilian side, who told us just last year, quote, don't laugh, but I just don't use email at all. It wasn't a fear of security or privacy. It's because she just didn't think email was useful. On the judicial side, a Supreme Court justice told us how they were interested in email, but they, quote, hadn't yet gotten around to it. In the upcoming year, they'll vote on everything from the constitutionality of NSA to net neutrality. that will change literally the, the business structure of the internet itself but they hadn't yet gotten around to it. They plan on it, but they hadn't yet. Or on the diplomatic side, a lot of folks here interested in diplomacy. A senior US official about to go off and negotiate with the Chinese on cybersecurity issues asked me what an ISP was. That's a lot like going off to negotiate with the Soviets during the Cold War and not knowing what an ICBM is. The best way of thinking about this all together is just this. When it comes to cyber terrorism, Al Qaeda would like to, but it can't. China could, but it doesn't want to. For both of them, yet. My point's not, not a discussion about cyber terrorism, but it's rather about strategy. Whether you're thinking about national level strategy, business or organizational university level strategy to your own personal strategy. It's always about choices. It's always about priorities, both setting them and following them. Security is one of those wicked problem areas, but it's not because of the technical side, the way we often would think it. It's because of the people part. Now, that makes it useful from a writer's perspective because you can flavor it with all sorts of you know, cool, funny stories like where we were trying to explain um, the value of trust and how the internet works. The story uh, that opens that chapter is about the um, time that Pakistan accidentally kidnapped all the world's cute cat videos for a day. It actually happened. Great, weird, funny story. But the bigger point here that I'm getting at is that if you want to set up your responses, again, at a global level to your own personal level, you have to focus on the people behind the threat and the people that have to be behind any answer to it. Mentality matters. We have to change our emphasis from one of defense or offense to one of resilience. This is not an area where you can just build a higher wall or deter the bad guy away. That kind of thinking won't work in this space. And you can particularly see the incentives, to go back to that, that some people have in pushing that idea. Rather, we have to accept that as long as we're online, there will be threats. And in fact, some of those threats will get inside your network, or they might already be inside your network. Instead, it's all about how resilient you are, how you power through the threat, how you get back up quickly even when you're knocked down.
And you can think about resilience as a physical model. I have an incredibly resilient body. We all do. My body expects that there's threats out there. It's a great exterior line of defense. In fact, right now, a square inch of my skin has over um, a million microbes on it. But my body expects that they'll still get inside. In fact, there's 10 times as many foreign microbes as there are human cells inside me right now, inside all of us. But our body is designed to power through it. And it's got all sorts of different ways of doing so. And then also figuring out when there's dangers, internal monitoring, the triage, you name it. But resilience is not just about physiology. It's also about psychology. Changing our narrative about cybersecurity from the power grid might go down, cyber 9-11, to the British model of how they face terrorism. Keep calm and carry on, which changes the incentives also of the attacker.